where everybody go. All right. Uh, I am Tim Soley. I'm the CISO and Executive Cyberspace Consultant for Phase 2. And what I want to talk to you today about is a product we're calling Phantom. It's uh, two products, actually. And we're trying to resolve the challenge of how do you compete and fight in a contested and congested environment using off-the-shelf technologies that exist today. Uh, so there's no long-term lead time. We can go forward and propagate the world with this stuff, and life will go on. Now, my slide flipper yesterday, I had to fire him, so I've got a new slide flipper. It's me. I'm not very good at this. I'm used to saying next slide, and it automatically changes. We're going to see how it works. Next slide. Oh, so far, so good. Um, did we get the right one on her? Yeah. All right. So if we look at the Army problem statements, machine learning types of things, we get a bunch of words, right? And then we get doctrine changes. We get guidance. We get direction. What's it really mean? That's an environment slide pulled from a technical exchange meeting with the Army. And as you can see, it's a complex, manually managed environment. How do we keep up with that? This is not the environment of the 70s or the 80s where we could shoot, move, and communicate because we had time on our side. This is an environment that's fluid, it's dynamic, it's instant, right? We have mission retaskings on flight birds, on weapon systems. And this is the description we get, right? So what do we do? Do we follow emerging doctrine? We've got JADC2, we've got multi-domain operations. Do we dig into new technologies? Do we invest in the next 10 to 20 years for a, you know, an MDO 2035 or 2050? When will we have a capability ready? Well, we say we've got one now, and our answer is to hide in plain sight. So if we go back to our environmental picture that we had of the spectrum and the EMOE. We look at multiple blockchains to secure data. We look at randomization, multi-spectral operations. We look at a blended solution across the two that integrates all our different environments. So that if you looked at that as a noise floor, we would remain below the noise floor and constantly shifting so that all our purpose-built networks would actually be decoys or deceptions kind of interesting concept. Next slide. The first way we start this process off, we have a box called Secure. Um, it bonds multiple channels. We can take satellite, we can take cellular, we can take data, we can take FM. It doesn't matter whatever connects to the box. As long as it has an IP-based um, capability, we can run it through a hemp and, and hardened box. It will use a random algorithm that it has built into it to scatter the actual data pathing across quality of service, across uh, jammed or interdicted lines, and it will switch between all of those and scatter your packets. So the packets are no longer dedicated to a satellite link or to a uh, FM link or to VHF links. They're randomized across all four. So now the adversary has to target across all four if he can identify all four. So we've made his problem more complex. Now everybody's using this, so you have a lot of noise, but no real discriminant signal. So we've raised the noise floor, and we've stayed below that noise threshold that you could actually catch. It's a hemp-hardened device. Uh, it's already been approved, it's secured. The company developed it for cellular communications in remote areas, and using regular uh, bonded cards, they were able to get 200 megabits of throughput. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was down at the division level looking at one meg, that was pretty happy days. Now we're up to 200 in an austere environment. I think I just got a little happier, and my boss got a little more excited about me because I'm delivering a little more capability. Next slide, let's see what this guy does. Oh my gosh, now we get into the crazy part of this. Everybody's heard, how many people have heard of Zero Trust? Just me. Oh, one guy, two guys. All right, good. Zero Trust is... Uh, it's interesting because all you really do, according to Google, is give the least amount of trust to somebody that you have in your employment based on their job. You don't really not trust them, right? Somebody else can come in and be them. You just limit their ability to be trusted. Well, we have now a software uh, blockchain capability that uses not only one blockchain. Crazy name, but we wanted to highlight the point that it's multiple chains that are configurable for uh, authentication, access, 
and um, encryption of data. And we, we brought this up to the company that's running it. They're using it on banking networks right now to try and uh, eliminate bank fraud. Because if you can't see the data, you can't access the data at rest, fraud can't occur. Um, and so we brought it up to them. We said, well, we have a bigger problem than, than you do, we think. We have 35 coalition countries on average that come to fight wars with us. And we just want to exchange data using 1980s means. Right? I hand them a redacted document. I want to share all the data with them, but only let them read the parts they're allowed to read. They said, well, what's your data taxonomy? And I said, well, we got to call the joint staff. <laughs> they haven't come up with that yet, but we can make them, right? But in the blockchain world, you can take a credential for every one of those countries and align it to the keywords that they're allowed to have the key phrases that they're allowed to have, and then pass that data in the, in the clear, basically, because it's encrypted up to a type one standard, and actually leave it on their computers, and they will not be able to access it unless they have the correct credentials. Now, the credentials, you guys are gonna ask me, where are they stored? Well, they could be stored anywhere you want them to be and pulled from any different location you need them to be. They could be from your fires database in your task organization. They could be from a maneuver uh, lay down for add-ons of people. They could be from your personnel system. They're all housed in the cloud and they're all instantly available to you and they come back as a yes or no answer just like the original authentication pieces did. Um, and if you need seven yeses to get in, just like you go into a Sabsto project and they go, are you A, B, C, D, E? And you have six, you don't ever get the data, right? So it's highly protected. They have nano chain models, they have a bunch of of huge words that our engineers love to throw around, like, uh, uh, oh my gosh, what's the one I just dumped? Um, it's the big word for mathematic shuffling of large numbers. That's it. Um, but in a long, in a, in a shorter story, right? As these blockchains couple out, they just add on. They're flexible, so you can take one for, let's just say, U.S. only come up with your system of authentication, add four eyes, add the fifth eye, add the sixth eye, and then go into coalition and party members. So as long as you can describe the data taxonomy, the blockchains can be built so that you have the encryption at the packet level to be able to disperse the data, access the data, and block access to the data. It's a complex slide. Now the beauty this adds to our solution is the throughput was 200 megs, all right? The packet level that we can break this down to with encryption is 32 bytes. Think about that for a second, 32 bytes. We can push this anywhere. Remote, contested locations, jammed locations. It will get through because the path will shift before the normal timeout occurs. So we're not pushing a large volume of data anymore down a single pipe, choking it out and waiting for something to happen and then us to resend it for all of us that tried sending medical files over a one meg pipe for an x-ray for somebody that was injured in, in combat. It doesn't work, right? But by shifting the path and breaking the file down into manageable chunks, we can make that a fluid operation across the board. Uh, and it's, it's pretty seamless. Um, I'm going to jump to questions because I don't think anybody cares. Next pass for us, but uh, we do have some interesting stuff coming up with third core and uh, some limited user tests and demonstrations if you're interested. So, anybody have any questions? I got to have one, or they won't let me leave. It was part of the contract. Uh, all right. Bold, brief, and easy. Thanks, guys.